Haven and on to New York. The fastest way to get to Boston by rail right now is to go to New Haven and then come back up. So I was kind of curious as to what might happen. It's a scenic route. You got a point there, but I understand it's scenic going through Sturbridge, too. <laughs> um, is there any chance that we're going to see a rail connection west of Worcester for commuter? No, I appreciate that. Um, that is certainly a goal of the administration. Um, we're, and to your point, just for folks, uh, we're spending about $75 million um, on the so-called Knowledge Quarter, which will connect um, New Haven to Springfield and then north to, to Vermont. Um, and that was a FRA grant that we received. We'll be likely doing work uh, starting in May. Um, and we're talking about potentially uh, owning uh, that facility, so for long-term growth. We've made a lot of investments in transportation in western Massachusetts. We also got a grant recently to look at uh, the Housatonic Tunnel and to see on the freight side if we could double stack that and allow to get more trucks off the road. But the so-called inland route, Boston uh, to Springfield, is something we're very interested in. Um, I think the problem, again, is money. Um, it, it would be a significant upgrade and investment. Obviously, we've got the first leg now. We're about to close the first leg, which is purchasing the line between Worcester and Boston. That gives us uh, essentially total control over that line. The next step would be to begin to talk to CSX about what we could do for more reliable service, which we are doing. Uh, we're also planning for expansion of South Station. South Station right now, the terminal station, is essentially full at rush hour. And if we want expanded service to South Coast Rail or more service to Western Massachusetts, or any other uh, ideas that we might have, the South Station is a bottleneck. But it is a priority, certainly, of the administration. The question, of course, comes back to money. Thank you for the question, though. Secretary. Hi, good morning. Paul Matera, Liberty Mutual Insurance. So this is more a curiosity question, I think, than, than anything else. How, how important is the federal transportation legislation to our plans here in the, in the Commonwealth? And, 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 and if there is a link and an important link, what are we doing to, you know, try to move that, uh, move that along? Sure. Um, it, it's hugely important. We net uh, hundreds of millions of dollars each year, both our transit and our highway program, from our formula funds. Um, if the Congress hadn't passed, uh, as of yesterday, um, at least an extension of that program, uh, unfortunately, I would have been ta talking to John on Monday and asking him to tell his contractors to lay off somewhere between 18 and 22,000 people as of Monday. Every, just about every highway project we had would have been shut down, just about every one. Um, and so what we got was another 90-day extension. So we're going to limp forward again for another 90 days and hope that the Congress does something. Uh, who knows? Uh, I'm not uh, very optimistic. But at the same time, more importantly, we can't plan for five years. Typically, a transportation surface transportation bill is somewhere between five and six years, which mirrors the capital planning we have for the T, and which is, it mirrors what we're beginning to do at Highway, which is also have a five-year capital plan. And by the way, I would love at some time, someday, to have all the cities and towns, vis-a-vis -vis their Chapter 90 funds, to also have a five-year capital plan so we can all plan together about what we need. It is a serious issue. Regardless of if you're a Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. I think Tip O'Neill said, there's no such thing as a Democrat or Republican road, bridge, or bus. Um, but unfortunately, the Congress can't get its act together. Now, what are we doing? I've spent a lot of time with uh, my colleagues from other uh, states. I was down in Washington last month. Uh, the administration, and it was very frustrated. Um, I think the, the, the House leadership is probably a little frustrated. I think they, too, understand that transportation is typically a policy area where you can come together. You can have healthy debates about what government should be doing in education and health care. But I think there's a fairly good consensus about what government should be doing around transportation and infrastructure. Um, you know, the, the Deficit Commission last year came out with a report, and one of their ideas was to raise the federal gas tax, and that's been endorsed not only by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, but by the AFL-CIO as well. There is an acknowledgment that this is not just a Massachusetts problem, but it is a problem all across the United States. And we have to do something soon. Good morning.